Well, we did not anticipate being back with you quickly. We put out a show earlier, which will determine whether we're going to hold on to that show or not here over the next couple of hours. We may just push it into later on this week, but we wanted to come to you again because... There's been another attempt on President Trump's life. That's right. Uh, an assassination attempt on the golf course this afternoon on Sunday. And we wanted to make sure we got you guys the latest information that we've been able to obtain and kind of wrap our mind around this unbelievable second assassination attempt on, on the president. It's I incredible. It really is. I, I don't even know where to go with this. We're going to break down part of what's going on here. And I think part of this situation is two months ago, the very real attempt on the president's life was sort of memory hold was sort of like it happened. But, you know, come on, let's not let's not talk about that. Right? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we nothing, haven't heard, we right? haven't heard anything about it. They no. still haven't discovered anything or announced anything. There's been arguments um, about, well, you know, and even people that we know and, and really, you know, trust a lot of their input have said, well, this is a federal issue. You're not going to hear anything from the federal government when actually that's not true. Um, we actually just researched how long it took for Ronald Reagan's assassination attempt to be reported with everything it was within 48 hours. The public knew every single thing about the guy who tried to attempt to kill President Reagan, which was clearly a federal investigation as well. Now we're here for round two. We don't even have the details still about round one. No, we don't. And we actually have more details on this already than we had on round one. So we still don't totally know what's going on there but this is unbelievable and, and realistically right now we just want to kind of give you an idea of what happened here and, and there's some things coming out on all of this and and there's some things we, we need to point out as well one of them is th this thought process that that other thing that happened two months ago should never be spoken of again media will never mention it and by the way last debate Never mentioned it. No. Never mentioned it. Right. And, and by the Trump. way, and when Trump mentioned it, we'll, we'll show you that video, by mm -hmm. the way, and what happened because ABC tried to put a stop to it the second he started talking about it. And now we have attempt number two on his life. He's out golfing in Florida, obviously, you know, West Palm, where he has Mar-a-Lago, mm -hmm. right? And he's out golfing. Somebody is in the shrubs with an AK-47 aimed at him. They end up exchanging fire. This person ends up bolting out of there, okay? As he bolts out of there, and his name is Ryan Ruth, as he bolts out of there, gets in a car. So then the guy gets in his car, tries to take off. Someone paying attention actually videos him and shows the car, calls the cops, says, wait a minute, this isn't right. He takes off, right? And the police, knowing his license plate number, someone paying attention, saves the day. They catch this Ryan Ruth a few miles later. And then they end up arresting him. So we want to go through what the FBI said happened during this event. Yeah, let's take a listen real quickly to get a quick update uh, from them when they first broke this news and kind of explained a little bit. This was about 5 p.m. East Coast time on Sunday. With them all the time. We were notified of that. And we had units here that immediately sealed off the area. Fortunately, we were able to locate a witness that came to us and said, hey, I saw the guy running out of the bushes. He jumped into a black Nissan, and I took a picture of the vehicle and the tank, which was great. So we had that information. Our real-time crime center put it out to the license plate readers, and we were able to get a hit on that vehicle on I-95 as it was headed into Martin County. We got a hold of Martin County Sheriff's Office, alerted them, and they spotted the vehicle and pulled it over and detained the guy. After that, we took the victim, I'm sorry, the witness that witnessed the incident, took, flew him up there, and he identified as the person that he saw running out of the bushes that jumped into the car. Now, in the bushes where this guy was is an AK-47 style rifle with a scope, two backpacks which were hung on the fence that had a ceramic tile in them, and a GoPro, which he was going to take pictures of. So those are being processed right now. The Secret Service agent that was on the course did a fantastic job. What they do is they have... They have someone who goes basically a hole or two ahead of Trump. And then he saw it in the bushes. He saw it, which could not have been easy to see. Right. And he noticed it. He noticed the barrel of the gun. And then it was on from there. So that is scary when you think you have one person 
out in front of Trump going a couple holes ahead. For any of you that have golfed, yeah. you go out on a golf course, you're looking around like, yeah, we're good. Like, I mean, you yeah. don't look at every little thing. And, and so they do deserve credit for that. But but the question is, too, as we work our way into this, how close was right, right. How close, how was, close he? was he? How close was he to Trump? Because that was the first question we asked the last time this went down. And he was about 150 yards roughly yeah. last time. Let's find out what the FBI had to say about Yeah, and this is actually, and I should be more clear on this. It's Rick. So the, the actual... Uh, who you're actually hearing from here. The FBI is in the investigation. Rick Bradshaw is the sheriff who you're hearing from here, but the FBI is actually doing the investigation. Okay, let's take a listen. How far away was Donald Trump when this gentleman was caught and stopped? Probably between three and 500 yards, but with a rifle and a scope like that, that's not a long distance. Yeah, so he's close. I mean, close enough, obviously, with the scope he had and with the gun he had to have easily killed President Trump. So what do we know about this this, uh, Ryan Ruth as of now? So what we know is when all this happened, his Facebook page was immediately pulled down by Facebook. Interesting. It was quickly captured. This is him right here. There's a picture of him as he was, I believe, being captured. Okay. But also, this is the Facebook profile. Okay immediately pulled down. However, his Twitter account was not. Okay. His Twitter account was left up. So we have some pictures of him here. It's Ryan Wesley Ruth, and you can see him here. Now, the big story with this guy, apparently his his big issue is the Ukraine war. He is very, very pro-Ukraine. He's actually gone to Ukraine trying to fight in the war, trying to recruit people to fight in that war. Wow. Okay, so that's where he most of his time is spent. And you can see pictures all over, whether it was Twitter or whether it was briefly Facebook, while those pages were still up. He was very, very adamant about the Ukraine winning their war against Russia. That that was his big thing. Now, there's a bunch of tweets out there from him. And some of them talk politics. A lot of them don't. A lot of them talk about Ukraine. He wanted you 2 to cut a song for the Ukraine war. So he reached out and tried to do that via Twitter. So some kind of unusual things there. There is some video of him, and this is him in the Ukraine, and he is being interviewed as to why he is going to the Ukraine to fight this war. So I want you to just listen to a little bit of this guy to get a feel for what he's all about. But this is Ruth who took the shot or tried to take a shot at President Trump. To me, you know, a lot of the other conflicts are gray, but this conflict is definitely black and white. This is about good versus evil. This is a storybook, you know, any movie we've ever watched, this is definitely evil against good. I mean, we're battling a situation here where, you know, the U- Ukrainians and the rest of the world are caring and kind and, and generous and, and unselfish and, and take care of one another. And it's just a matter of, you know, we need to stand up for that. That is the most important thing in the world is just to show human beings that we're kind and we're caring and that we take care of one another and that the world is united so that we feed each other and make sure that, you know, we, we all move forward as, as one. Okay. Mm. Well, he doesn't seem, I mean, if you continue on his page, obviously there is some mental illness there right. of some no sort. No question. It's clear. I don't think I mean, you take a shot right. at something like this without mental illness, right? Correct. I mean, so I think it's a no given, doubt. but let's just read his yeah. tweet. He is actually calling out the president. Your campaign should be called something like CADAF, K-A-D-A-F, keep America democratic and free. Trump should be MASA, make American slaves again, master. Democracy is on the ballot and we cannot lose. We cannot afford to fail. The world is counting on us to show the way. Again, it goes back to this whole theory that the democracy of America is at stake. If Trump wins this ticket, um, if Trump wins the election, heaven forbid, our democracy, as we know, it's over. It's it's definitely playing into that. Now, again, that was in the spring where we saw a lot of that rhetoric being posed out there on media and, you know, pretty much anywhere you went on well, social. And clearly it. his feelings have not Changed. abated in any way. In fact, they've gotten worse because he thought he should take a shot and try to kill him. Right. I so, mean, I, so this is worse. I, I mean, this sort of thing is nuts. And, and then he even before this, he went after Tulsi Gabbard. And again, this was in 2022 going after Tulsi Gabbard. He says, you're an idiot. 
Why don't you go and join Putin and Trump and be their third leg? Please leave my Hawaii. You embarrass me. By the way, he was living in Hawaii at the time. Shut your stupid mouth. This uh, this a war where people are getting slaughtered for no reason. I am going to fight and die for Ukraine. Yeah. Is what he says. So so you look at this and just see, obviously, this guy's mentally ill. Right. I mean, there's there's no question about that. But again, we, we continually have this situation where there is a double standard. The, there, is, there is rhetoric on one side where, where if you say anything as a Republican, it is you're inciting violence, whatever it is. But there's only one side getting shot at right now. Right. And, and so. And twice. And within a matter of a couple of months, it's a presidential candidate getting shot at. In America, which I don't know, I guess I'm confused again. I thought we had this discussion last time that there was going to be more security measures taken, that Biden had promised all these additional resources and security measures for Trump. Is that just not happening? I mean, well, that's what I, it feels like. I think like. it was stepped. So I think what we've seen is a step up, right? So in other words, you go back to Pennsylvania and, and it was clearly not, you know, not adequate in any way, shape or form, not executed in a competent fashion. And the number of people on the scene did not have the kind of coverage they needed. And not only that, but the people that were there weren't properly trained most likely. Okay. So there's that. So they start stepping that up. Well, what we now know is Trump does not get the level of security that the sitting president does. We now know that. And they talked about that today. So the sheriff talked about this today. So I want to play this and then we can talk about what it means going forward. So they talked about the fact that Donald Trump does not see the same sort of security that Joe Biden does. Well, you got to understand the golf course is surrounded by shrubbery. So, so when somebody gets into the shrubbery, they're pretty much out of sight. All right. And at this level that he is at right now, he's not the sitting president. If he was, we would have had this higher golf course around it. Well, because he's not, the security is limited to the areas that the Secret Service deems possible. So I would imagine that the next time he comes at a golf course, there'll probably be a little bit more people around the perimeter. Okay, I think it's very clear now, and if this doesn't happen, then then it there should be fury on all sides, right? Because you have to protect Trump now at the same level that you would protect a president. It's that clear. He's been shot at, or there's been an attempted assassination, however you want to say it, multiple times in two months. How in the world can you not offer him the same security that you offer the president of the United States? This is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, and again, it's really not, it shouldn't be up to Biden to determine that. I mean, this is just a common sense situation now that you need to protect those who are trying to run for office, especially with, uh, you know, just a couple of months really before the election. We're not talking, you know, a year. We're talking a couple of months. And they've been asking for additional security. Obviously, it's not enough. Right. And so it's a matter of, at this point, I, I don't know how Trump is... I can't imagine how he's feeling. Like, I just can't imagine the emotional turmoil for his family to, to you know, to be going out there trying to, I mean, he's just trying to play golf this time. He wasn't even trying to give a speech. Right. I would think there'd be a little bit, you know, of hesitation. Um, and who knows what he's gone through mentally to have to like block that out to be able to do other things. And I'm sure, I'm sure golf is one of the ways he goes and kind of decompresses. And then now this is even taken away from him. So I, I agree. But the problem too, I see in all of this is the fact that because of the way it's handled and because it's Trump and on the other side, there is nothing that can't be said by the other side to, to make this something that's Trump's fault. This is also Trump's fault, according to MSNBC. So I want you to listen to this ridiculous exchange on MSNBC minutes after the details came out on this. But but the takeaway from all this is, well, what's Trump going to do to help fix the situation? Trump's the one getting shot at, right? He's the one getting shot at. But yet it's his fault. Listen to this. Uh, do, do you expect there to be calls from within the Trump campaign to do that? Um, because he's going to reach out to his uh, supporters and say, let's take this down. Uh, we do not know, again, the source of any gunshot or gunshots. We don't know who's responsible for this. Uh, the whole thing has yet to be 100% confirmed uh, from start to finish how this all played out. But do you expect to hear anything from the Trump campaign about toning down the rhetoric, toning down the violence, or would that be atypical? of uh, the former president. 
Well, Alex, remember back to the assassination attempt on President Trump's life and how, you know, there was talk of a new tone and then the re the Republican convention was by Trumpian standards muted and it did seem like he was, you know, just trying to take it down a few notches, but then by the end of his convention speech, you know, we were kind of back to where uh, we started. So Okay, right there. Is there going to be something from the Trump campaign to tone things down. And then his brilliant guest says, well, I mean, they toned down a little at the last one, but then it went right back up. So let's take another shot at him. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? You would never do this the other way. No. If someone had tried to shoot Kamala Harris twice in two months, there would be fury beyond imagination. Right. And the security measures. As there should be, by the way. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anybody that's even, I just think that you should be protected regardless if you, when you're running for office. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous that this is part of, this is part of our democracy is to have the ability to have a safe and fair election. No, no, we, no, but no, no, no. But, it's demo but, but no, Trump's a threat to democracy. What are you talking about? Uh, I mean, I, and but I that love is that. He the, that is the point, right? They say it all the time. Right. And He's it, the threat to democracy. So then you get whack jobs who are like, okay, I'm going to take him out. Yeah. Multiple times now. Right. And then whenever it comes time to say, wait a minute, where's the rhetoric going off the rails? It's always on Trump that it's going off the rails. Right. It's now, never I'm not saying everything he says is right. You're right. There's some stuff that's said that you don't want said. But to act like this is not happening to him is ludicrous. Well, and to act like the 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 Democratic Party is in charge of democracy of America, like they're the the holders, the gatekeepers of democracy, and they get to say who's democrat, you know, who's going to keep it or not, is ridiculous. Yeah. And again, we this this is what happens. You just keep this rhetoric going, and you just keep on. I mean, even like we said during the debate. He he brings up briefly that he took a bullet, and uh, they don't want to talk about that. Well, let's let's look at the video. I guess we'll take the video, right? Let's yeah, go back let's to the let's go back to the video the, two months ago. Okay, let's do two months ago. This is again. Oh, sorry, we, that's okay. This two months ago. Here's how things shook out when Trump was on the stage in Pennsylvania. They see something that said, "Take a look at what happened." Oh. Oh. Hit him in the ear. Return fire from snipers. But he goes down. Obviously, those are the shots. One of those shots killed Corey Compertori. Right. Right? Okay. So then we get back to your point. Right, where they bring it up. I mean, he brings it up. Let's show this clip of the debate where he, they, he brings up the fact that he takes a bullet, he, he gets shot at, and then Muir, David Muir, like, click, quickly wants to, like, remove this topic from the, from the conversation when it's an assassination attempt on one of our candidates. Please. We got this is the one that weaponized, not me. She weaponized. I probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say about me. They talk about democracy. I'm a threat to democracy. They're the threat to democracy President with a Trump. fake Russia, 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 Russia investigation we do have a lot that to get. went nowhere. We have a lot to get to. Right. We have a okay. lot to get to. We have, we have a lot, lot to get to. We can't possibly talk about the fact that you were shot at. But, yeah. you know, and they had no problem talking about January 6th. And again, if you want to talk about January 6th, that's fine. That's that's open for debate. But at the same time, to act like the Trump first assassination attempt never happened, which is clearly what Muir was trying to do. Right. Trying to act like none of this ever happened. Let's stop talking about it. And then now you get a second one. These things matter. They absolutely matter. And when you act like they never happened or you memory hold them or you say he had it coming because that's basically what they do in many cases. That is what puts so many people in danger and it puts our democracy in danger. Right. And we all have to stand up and talk about that and, and not act like this is one sided, that only one side is accountable for their rhetoric. Both sides should be accountable. Right. And do we want to become a country where we just take down a leader when we have assassination tips or we kill our leaders? Like, is that who are we are becoming? And is that the kind of community that we want to be you know, promoting in this country? And I just think I really hope people are waking up to how dangerous this can actually be common is becoming and it's still frightening to me that again no information about the first shooter really little information i don't buy anymore that this is just a federal investigation and we can't offer you that information because we don't have to tell you and there's nobody to check them on that i mean obviously that's what's happening but again as we just said in the beginning of the show within 48 hours of ronald reagan getting shot we knew everything about that shooter 
So again, there is zero reason, and that was a federal investigation at the time. There's zero reason that we cannot know that information about the first shooter and find out what is happening. Is there a pattern? I mean, obviously there seems to be some pattern. They want him out. And so this is what they're what they're this is what they're taking on to do it. Well, I, and I think I wonder now what what I'm most concerned with is our assassination attempts now partisan. Where it's like, well, it was a, it was a, it was shot at a Republican. So as a Democrat, I'll say a quick little thing or whatever. And if, and if it happens the other way, then the Republicans would do that. Like, that's not acceptable. It's got to be fury on both sides saying this can't happen. Mm -hmm. But we're not getting that now. We're getting literally assassination assassination attempts are becoming partisan events. Right. Oh, well, he barely got hit in the ear. Come on. I mean, really? Oh, and they didn't really even. There wasn't really an exchange of gunfire on the golf course. It was fine. Really? That's what we are now? Right. I mean, that's the thing that scares me. That can't be the way we operate. It cannot be the way we operate. And, and, but you've seen it in more than just, you know, on TV. Right. Like, look, let's look at this Washington Post headline. And again, not a huge fan of Washington Post. Right. So uh, this doesn't surprise me. But still, it says Trump stokes suspicions, suspicions about assassination attempt, raising fears of more violence. After an initial period of relative restraint, the former president has begun blaming the shooting on his opponents and amplifying conspiracy theories. Is he, though? Yeah. I mean, again, like, w wouldn't it be lovely if we actually had the information so we could digest it as right. the American public? And we said on that show, if they don't really, if they don't start releasing information, all the theories are going to start creeping up. That's what happens. Right. Still have no answers on that. So, of course, he's going to be assuming that the person that shot at me didn't want me to be president and thought this was the best way to go about it. Now, I'm sorry, but that's kind of deductive reasoning and else we have more information to make a better, wiser understanding of something. Well, I don't look, I don't think most mainline Democrats want anything to do with any of this. So then stand up and say it. Right. That's all. Stand up and say this is completely ridiculous and unacceptable, you know, because it's easy in the online world to see people that and I've seen some quotes already from people who have said horrendous things about this one, too. Right. And it's, but most people don't feel that way. So stand up and say, look, this is unacceptable. We can't have this. Right. And, and, I, and so I, I hope that we'll see that. But it's interesting because Dan Bongino was testifying, I think, or, or giving a speech in, in front of a group um, a couple of about six weeks ago. And he said something really interesting. And I want you to listen to his quote. Now, Dan Bongino's radio host, but he used to be a Secret Service agent. Or he knows he knows the business very, very well. Right. And we actually aired a lot of his interview and his backstory when we covered the Trump, the first yeah, assassination attempt of Trump. Yep. Yep. So here's what he said about Trump and the fact that he's not surprised at all. That in fact, he predicted that someone would take another shot at Trump. Mr. Bongino, in your opinion, is the Secret Service in a better spot? today with Director Rowe in charge? No, it's it's worse. And, and sadly, I'm glad this is all being recorded because when something else happens, and I hope it doesn't, I pray to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that I'm wrong, that you play this and go, look, that guy was crazy. You think this is the last incident, you're out of your mind. We have seen these incidents over and over. We saw the Georgia grenade incident with President Bush. They overtook the magnetometers. The Secret Service leadership in charge now with the exact same people. Exact same. Can you imagine a C-suite at a company that makes widgets? We find out that there's a, there's a design defect. The widget explodes and kills 10 people. And the CTO gets a promotion to CEO. You understand that's what happened here, correct? These are the same people. Kim Cheadle, the director, wasn't even fired. She was allowed to resign. She'll go get some cushy job somewhere. And her deputy, who is one of the guys behind these stupid... Waste of time things like agents wearing red ties on the detail. Because, because, this actually happened, by the way. You, you, these people will tell you this on the road if you get the right people. He was concerned about the tie color of the agents on the detail because it seemed to imply he supported President Trump. Congressman Biggs wearing a red tie. You're wearing a semi-red tie. It has nothing to do with anything. This is the kind of stuff the Secret Service was actually wasting their time with while withholding CSU counter uh, surveillance assets and counter sniper assets from probably the most threatened man on earth. If you can explain it, good luck. Cause that's not the. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's wild. So really what we see here is less say incompetence issues with the secret service and how they handled this one, but just overall higher management saying, wait a minute, we've got to protect this guy. Like, 
a sitting president, which should have been done. And so what Bongino's talking about is there's a real rot there in the Secret Service, but smarter decisions have to be made going forward, knowing that two different people now have tried to take shots. Well, and we continue to see people's faith in big organizations, government organizations, dwindle, right? And you wonder, well, if you want to rebuild trust with the American people for the FBI or the Secret Service or the DOJ or any of these things, every step they're taking to make changes and make them more effective matters. And obviously, still not seeing that. So, um, you know, what are they going to say? We're going to give Trump more Secret Service now? Yeah. Like, I I think that will be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see how this rolls out over the next 48 hours or 24 hours um, from mainstream media. I'd love to see how they're going to shake around this one again, who, you know, if they're going to be placing blame, continuing to place blame on well, on Trump for, you know, being Trump. And this is, you know, what well, you no, get. Well, no, Lester Holt uh, gave a clue of that. He, I would, I just watched a little bit of his um, evening news for NBC and he, they, they did this story and then they went to a story on what's going on in Ohio with, with all the issues with the Haitian migrants and, and, and how many people are going in to portions of Ohio that way. And he, and he went and said, basically, you know, rhetoric continues to, you know, stream out of control from the president or he basically, or former president baselessly said, da, 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 da. So he just keeps stoking it. There's, you're going to keep stoking it. Like this isn't going to stop. Yeah. This isn't going to stop. And, and so I, I think, I don't know where this goes from here. I don't know where this race goes from here, but yet again, a presidential race, which has taken wild swings is likely to somehow or other take another one. And so to believe that we won't see another wild swing here in the next month is probably fantasy. We probably will. Yeah. I mean, you really, it's, it starts to get to be kind of just, it's so unbelievable that it almost, uh, you get desensitized, but I'm hoping people are not getting desensitized to this because this is a real issue. Like we have people out shooting presidential candidates, former presidents, and that's how they think they're going to take democracy into their own hands. I mean, we better be waking up and making our voices be really heard as a unified American. Right. I don't care what party you're in. We need to stepping up, be stepping up and saying, listen, we need fair and, and safe elections. And that means safety for our candidates as well as their families and everything oh, else. So this unreal. is just. I mean, to think about, I mean, think about the fact that you had this race between Biden and, and Trump that was rolling along all kinds of crazy stuff there. And then. Someone shoots at Trump, then you have the debate, right? Mm-hmm. Or you have, yeah, the Republican convention, then you have the debate, Biden falls down on the debate, Harris comes in, you know, the good vibes for the month, Yeah. and then she has her convention, her momentum starts to slow down, then you have their debate where she had a better night than he did, but yet all anybody talks about is the cats and dogs out of it, right? Right. right. So we, that's we about and then show. another potential shot at Trump. And so this is beyond anything we've ever seen. I, and I don't know where it's headed, but I think your conduct during this time as a leader, and, and I think even as us as normal citizens matters. So I think that we have to stand up and and say to each other, this kind of stuff has to stop. Well, and and I really hope that the media are responsible enough to not try to downplay it, what this is ha- what's happened again, because they certainly wouldn't do that if it was on the other foot. I mean, if this was aimed at Harris right. or Walt. Yeah. So I just think, I really hope that we can all grow up actually and do our jobs as reporters and as reporting news and stop with the opinions and stop with your fact checking in real time, which is really just your opinion. Um, as a media member, because what you say is, ma- is ma- it matters to the the message that goes out across social media. It's what it's what matter what people are picking up on, and they take what a lot of media people say as fact, and that's pretty scary. So I'm hoping that they actually do their job this time and really, you know, this guy is our our understanding is that he was supporting Biden initially. This the shooter, correct? Mm-hmm. He was a Biden supporter. Uh, he, yeah, he was, which I don't, I mean, take for much. I mean, what a, yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a registered Democrat who gave to, to Biden. Yeah. Apparently he voted for Trump though in 16. What I mean, Just whatever. Just canon regardless. Right, right. Either, so I'm always like kind of one of these things where I, I don't really look into their, like, I don't care what they say they were or whatever else, but clearly they're deeply disturbed and they take cues from people in the society that say, 
if you don't do this, democracy's over. Right. If, we, if he wins, democracy's over. That's not true in any way, shape, or form, and it's a lie. Right. And the people who are who are smart enough to know that it's a lie are the ones that are perpetrating it. So stop saying that. Right. We, he's already been president for four years. We know this. Right. Okay. Like we know he, that the democracy is not going to end. Right. He didn't end democracy when he was in there for the first time. But this years. time he will. Yeah. Right. I mean, give me it's a break. Just, oh, the language of, you know, well, he won't give up the presidency if he, you know, when it's time to pass it down or he won't give up right. the election. He won't leave office Again, and everything it's else. It's just like, uh, it, this isn't helping anything. It is not what's actually happened. Right. It's hyperbole about something that did happen. And it's just, it's funneling the situation. So I just feel like, we need to get on the bus of actually sharing factual information and not just opinion based garbage yeah. because it funnels the wrong kind well, of and it's not opinion reaction. it's it, in a lot of cases for a lot of people in the political world it's not opinion it's it's manipulation it's trying to fire people up for something that that you're hoping you can get them juiced up enough to do what you want them to do. Now, oh. I'm not saying what you want them to do is shoot at a candidate, but what you want them to do is to believe the garbage that you're showing. The garbage that you're showing, which about. is what if you watch our show that we shot previously today, um, we you know, we talked a lot about even just being factual about the abortion information. You know, making sure that you're not blowing that out of proportion and saying if Trump's elected, he's going to he's going to put in a federal ban. That's just not true. There's nothing that supports that that idea of knowledge. It gets people fired up and it gives them the wrong information. And as a as somebody that's we've experienced um, bad wrong information being funneled out to voters shortly before an election and impacting a decision by voters. At this point, voters deserve to have factual information about the two candidates, their policies, and where they stand on those issues. Everything else should not matter from mainstream media. I think they should back away and they should just do their jobs. Yeah, well, good luck with that I know, happening. I know. So we might as well uh, at least have a smile about something at the end of this. Okay. <laughs> so Jimmy Falia, who is a comedian, he uh, he had a tweet after this. There's two of these we want to hit. He says, I want to live in an America where the press has more access to the Democratic nominee than the assassins do to the Republican nominee. Wow. I mean, it's like, ay, yeah, yeah. And then this one from the Babylon Bee, obviously satirical, yes. but pretty funny. A media assures Americans the real threat is the side that keeps getting shot at. <laughs> so, but you got to read the pull quote from that. Yeah, it says here, um, the people getting shot at and murdered, they are the real threats, explained <laughs> CNN correspondent. Every time you see another attempt to kill a Republican, remember that Democrats are the party of peace and tolerance. <laughs> the media also condemned Republicans for using such harsh rhetoric and causing people to try to murder them. We hereby call on the people getting shot at to stop being mean, Dana Bash said. And she went on to say, I hope if Republicans can manage to escape the guy shooting an AK-47, they'll consider how hurtful words can be. It's a time, uh, it is time that people with the bullets whizzing over their heads, tone things down. <laughs> yeah, again, Babylon B, that's not actually a real story, although uh, it, it kind of sometimes is. Yeah, I mean, well, it really, it's, it, it will well, be interesting to watch. It's less satirical than it used to be. Yeah, we'll see how Bash, what she has to say about this at all. Well, you know, hey, look, out. again, back and forth on all this. We, we talk about it all the time. Again, we always try on the show to not... You know, just to beat you over the head with partisanship because I don't think it's it's helpful to do that. But I do think that it is important that as a country, you have to acknowledge what's happening here. And, and so, and, and on and on both sides, it, it 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 is it's scary to me where we are. I just right. I, I really think so. Anyway, we'll we'll continue to monitor this stuff and prediction. You got a prediction with the the next month? You have a crazy prediction of what happens in the next well, month? I don't even want to take a, a, a guess at this anymore because I, you know, honestly, I feel like I, I do believe that the media will try to downplay this. Yeah. They will try to say that this is a lone wolf situation, uh, whatever they're going to, well, yeah. they're going to just make this a, a small little try to, they're trying to going to try to make this make a, it a one or two day story. Correct. Get it out. And they are going to try to find something else, um, to, to be the breaking news of, uh, of something. So I don't know. I don't, this is far from over. I think it's still going to be a close race. Yeah. I think it, it really it would have it would have to be a major act of I don't know natural causes or something to really throw this thing up into a big wrench one way or the other. I think it's just going to be a really tight race. It's going to come back down to swing votes, but it obviously gives us plenty to just keep digesting on a show like this. Yep. So okay. Anyway, all right, we'll put this baby up right now, and then hopefully uh, we'll be back with you on Wednesday night into Thursday. Thanks for joining us on the special edition. 
You've been listening to the No Doubt About It podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at No Doubt About It Podcast. No Doubt About It. The No Doubt About It Podcast is a Choose Adventure Media production. See you next time on No Doubt About It. There is no doubt about it.